yesterday's prophecies for today's world. But greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. The Holy Spirit dwells in every believer and he is in you and you need not be afraid. And now, how Lindsay's Bible study, the book of John. Of all the books of the New Testament, the earliest manuscripts supporting any book in the Bible are all manuscripts of the Gospel of John. You know that? Amazing. Most of the Gospel of John is supported by early 2nd century manuscripts. And it so happens that that's the case here, monogenes theos, because only begotten God was something that was hard for people to understand. And uh, so a lot of times they would just say, well, the scribe must have uh, miscopied it or something, because this doesn't make sense. Because when you stop and think about it, the only God that was ever born, that's what only begotten means, the only God that was ever born. And since in other places it says the only begotten Son, somebody made the decision that's what it should have been here. But that is very dicey to do with a God that says, don't change the word. But the all of the second, third century papyri that we have, the fragments of uh, manuscripts that was written on papyrus, uh, the better manuscripts like Codex Sinaiticus, uh, they all have only begotten God. And that is very, very interesting. Because wrap your mind around the fact there's only one member of the Godhead that has ever experienced a birth into a creature form. Think about that. He is the the second person to God, the only one who ever voluntarily allowed himself to be born into and truly become a human being. But there were many reasons why he had to do that. Because you see, if he wanted to save the human race, he had to be what? He had to be human. And so, I'm just going to throw a little bit of things that in seminary guys get together and try to resolve pretty soon. Your mind is boggled, but you start trying to reason some of these things out. And uh, there were four centuries of battles between different uh, church synods and things like that where they tried to battle out the true nature of the person of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ is the unique person of all time and all the universe. There is no other person like him. He's different than the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Father, because he's also inseparably united to a human nature. He's different than all of us, in that, in addition to being, in every sense of the word, a complete human being, he's also the eternal creator God. So now, you put the, those two things together. What you have, you don't have two persons or you'd have a split personality, right? There can only be one person. So, you put human, a perfect human nature with undiminished deity and you unite them together 
forever. That's what happened. There is no mixture of the human attributes with the divine attributes. They're distinct. They're never mixed. But they're united together in one person, one will, one intellect, one emotion, One moral reason, one character, but it's inseparably united without mixture. So start thinking about, wonder when Jesus, as a human, first began to be aware of who he was as a human being. Interesting, isn't it? Because he was a true human being, he had to learn. His divine nature just kind of <laughs> was amused and sat around waiting for him to catch up. But let me show you something that just blew my mind, and, and most people just read right over. This I want you to turn to, Hebrews chapter 10. Let's begin with verse 4. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, he, when he comes into the world, who's he? Jesus. All right. He's going to say some things. When does he say it? Students. When does he say what he's about to say? When he came into the world. In other words, when he was born of Mary, the moment he came out of the womb, this is what the Son of God said to the Father. Sacrifice and offering thou hast not desired, but a body thou hast prepared for me. In whole burnt offering and sacrifices for sin thou hast taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. To do thy will, O God. Can you imagine the heart of the Father? When this little baby comes into the world. The second person that was joined him said this to the Father. And it was cast in the light of his ultimate to replace the animal sacrifices that could never take away sin and so he says a body you have prepared for me and that body of that human being was a direct son of God the first person and if we can feel Enormous compassion for our children. And suppose we knew, as God the Father knew, as we look at that beautiful little baby, and we adore it, that we realize it's born to die a horrible death. That's what went on. But his human nature seems to have begun to catch up with his divine nature as far as his self-awareness. Sometime around six, seven years old. Because by the time he was 12, he was confounding the scribes and and the great scholars of his day. Now, it says that no man has seen God at any time. I want to read a couple of verses. I'll give you the reference. I'll just read them to you. In Exodus 33, verse 20, the second person that God had was talking to Moses. 
And he said to him, But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man can see me and live. See, that's why no man's ever seen God. In God's undiminished deity, it would kill you. And the next verse, John six forty six. Jesus shows his awareness of where his divine nature came from here. He says, not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Now this shows his awareness that he is God. Because no man could see the face of God and survive. But he says, no man has seen God. But I have. And they say that Jesus never made any claim that he was more than a man. <laughs> it's all over the place. Nor did the, you know, that the, the apostles really never made such a claim. It's all over the place. And uh, then we look at uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, where it says, In these last days he has spoken to us, in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. It's a new international version I'm reading. And through him, it's a good translation of this particular passage. It says, and through whom he made the universe, the sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being. He sustains all things by his powerful word, who after he provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. I challenge you to do something. I remember the first time I did this. I got a... Uh, I got a uh, blue colored pencil and a red colored pencil. And I just started off reading through the Gospels. And every time Jesus said something that emanated from his human nature, I would put red, underline in red. Every time he said something that had to emanate from his divine nature, I would put blue. You would be amazing how interesting the Gospels get when you start analyzing it that way. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, look with me at John now, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 28. You heard that I said to you, I go away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. From what nature is he speaking? Right. Exactly. In his deity, the Father's not greater, is he? See, this is where people get tra trapped up by these uh, people, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Mormons, etc. They come in with all of these things to show that Jesus really wasn't God. So they'll read something like this and say, he says right there, the Father's greater than he is. So how can he be equal? Well, he's speaking from his human nature. Look at John 10. Look at verse 29. My father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. Now he's talking about the fact that once a person believes in Jesus Christ, no one can pluck them out of his hand. And then in verse 30 he says, I and the father are one. Now, in the original, Greek, it would be translated this way. I and the Father are one essence. In other words, co-equal in every sense. 
What nature was he speaking from there? His divine nature. Well, there are some simple ones too, like in uh, John chapter 6. We'll really cover these when we get there, but I just want to give you an example. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Verse 38. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. What nature is he speaking from? Divine nature. He came down from heaven. Stepped out of eternity into time, see? And uh, then in verse uh, 41. The Jews, therefore, were grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven. They understood absolutely what he was claiming. They knew he was claiming to be God. No man can say, I came down out of heaven to give life to the world. So they knew. Then verse uh, 42, and they were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down out of heaven? No mistaking what he's claiming, and there's no mistaking from which nature he was saying. Now, do you get the idea that whenever you read the gospel, it's not as simple as you thought it was? When you start getting into this, you're getting into the meat. I'm trying to take you from pablum to porterhouse, okay, in your Christian growth. Stick with me in the Gospel of John. May not be as uh, titillating as prophecy, but it'll do something much more important. Not that I minimize prophecy, but this is what we all need. To feed the real soul. You need to learn who Jesus is so you will love him back passionately. You know, Jesus reaches the climax of one of his most important roles of being God and man in order that he might reveal the invisible God to us. And the Highlight is John chapter 14, verse 9, which says to Thomas, who said, show us the Father and it will suffice us. He said, Thomas, have you been so long with me and you have not seen me? You have not known me? He who has seen me has seen the Father. That is an enormous statement, an enormous claim. In other words, he says, I have so perfectly interpreted and revealed and unveiled the invisible God before you in my very person that when you have seen me, you've seen the Father. No one but God could claim that. You can't be a perfect representation of the eternal omnipotent God unless you're one of them. In John 1.18 where it says no man has seen God at any time the only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father. The only God who was ever born as a human and then he reminds you of his qualifications to perfectly reveal God by saying, who is always inside of, the word in the Greek, the preposition, ice means to be inside of, who is always inside of the bosom. And that was an ancient term that was used for the most intimate fellowship or communion that human beings could have. And we would say today, probably, who is always in the very heart of the Father? In other words, this only begotten God who became one of us is always, even when he was here, in the very heart of 
God the Father. And then it says, he has revealed him. And it, the word reveal is from the Greek word exegesis, exegato, exegetomai here in uh, this verse. Exegesis, every uh, student in seminary Bible school knows that word. And to exegete means to carefully uh, interpret the meaning of a, a verse of scripture. Well, it says that he perfectly interpreted and unveiled the invisible God to us. And that was one of his great parts of his mission, was to unveil that to us. And so that's the end of the prologue here. He's thrown the gauntlet into the arena, hasn't he? The Apostle John. He, he says, this is the one that I am going to show you. We walked with. We talked with. We saw what he did. We, are bear, we bear witness of these things that he did. The creator of the universe walked with us, ate with us, talked with us, taught us, bore our sorrows, carried us along. He says, that's the person this book's about. Now, let me quickly go through a few things here to kind of sum up some things. You know, uh, it says, Jesus says that he unveiled, it's said of him, that he unveiled the living God. Turn to John chapter 3, verse 11. Holy Spirit revealed something to me today, and my wife said, didn't you know that? I've known that a long time ago. I felt kind of, kind of deflated. <laughs> In uh, John chapter 3, Verse 11, Jesus says, truly, and now remember who he's talking to. He's talking to the scholar of the Sanhedrin. Because in this chapter, he says, are you the teacher of Israel? Definite article before it, which means he is the most distinguished teacher of Israel. Not just one of the guys. Nicodemus was the teacher of Israel. And he says, and you don't know these things. Now he's talking to Nicodemus, and this is what he said, verse 11. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak, or we keep on speaking, present tense, that which we know and bear witness of that which we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. Who are those plurals referring to? Well, most people would think right away he's talking about Jesus and the disciples' witness. But the context shows that's not what it is. When he says we, he's saying the Father and the Holy Spirit and me. And when he says our, he's talking about the Trinity. You say, how can you verify that? All right, look at this. Truly, truly, I say to you, we keep speaking that which we know. In other words, and this word means to have a full comprehension. There wasn't any man that had a full comprehension of all those things behind him. And then it says, and we keep bearing witness of that which we have seen. We have seen. Verse 12, if I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how should you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Now, how would he know what he testifies about what he has seen and what he's heard? Verse 13, no one has ascended into heaven, but he 
who descended from heaven, even the Son of Man. So see, he's talking about things that he knew as he descended from heaven. By the way, you know one of Jesus' favorite titles was Son of Man? You know why? Because to him, that was the most unusual thing, to be a Son of Man. Now, I can go around, I'm a Son of Man, and say, well, that's kind of obvious, idiot. If I run around and I say, I'm a son of God, that gets a little bit of attention. Join us next week for the continuation of Hal Lindsey's Bible study of the book of John. The moment you believe in Jesus Christ, you become God's possession. You are bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't earn it. You can't deserve it. You can't buy it, and you can't lose it. Because if you could, you would. <laughs> As I prepared for this week's program, I was again struck by the speed with which events are moving into the scenario the prophets predicted for the end times. I believe we're there. People on the street are talking about what all of these things mean. Folks that wouldn't darken the door of a church or pick up a, a Bible are now very curious. This may be our greatest opportunity, maybe even our last opportunity, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ before we're silenced by political correctness. The message that God has given me is more important now than it's ever been for the church and for the nation. That's why I'm asking you to help me to expand our reach. You can find more of Hal Lindsey at his website, www.howlindsey.com. There you can access our video and article archives. Visit our online store for Hal Lindsey CDs, books, and other specialty items. Hal Lindsey's comprehensive teaching on the Gospel of John is now available as an audio book. This incredible teaching will enrich your personal study of the book of John and enhance your understanding of the nature and character of Jesus Christ. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to How Lindsay Media Ministries, P.O. Box 470-470, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74147. You can also support this ministry online. Visit howlindsay.com or call 1-888-RAPTURE.